welcome back to another video on my YouTube channel. This time I want to give you my personal tips and settings for shooting better run and gun videos on your Sony camera. These settings are working with most Sony cameras and I use them on my Sony a7 III and even now on my Sony a7S III. First of all, before you ask how I got this dreamy look into the footage of my intro sequence, I use a one half Black Pro mist filter and also on the day it rained a lot, which made the effect even stronger. If I shoot B-roll of persons, I always shoot everything in 100p or 50p. Depending on your region, you may have to use 60p or 120p. If you don't have an A7S III, just shoot in 1080p, it doesn't really matter if it's 4K or full HD. First of all, let's talk about the record media settings. When your Sony camera has two SD card slots, then you should record on both simultaneously. Having a backup of your client shoot, especially for events like weddings, shooting on two SD cards will be a life-saving experience. So we open the record media settings, then we prioritize slot one and the record mode should be set to simultaneously for photo and video. One addition that the Sony a7S III has, you can now record simultaneously on both SD cards while also recording proxies directly on your camera at the same time. Now next up, let's talk about the IBIS. I also get asked a lot if you should use the IBIS when shooting on a gimbal. The short answer is yes. Always leave the IBIS on standard mode when shooting on a gimbal. It helps to reduce small shakes in the footage. The A7S III has a new active mode, but I only use that for handheld shots. This mode will do weird quirks when shooting on a gimbal and it will also crop 10% into your footage, so keep that in mind. What you need to know about shooting on manual lenses in combination with the IBIS as standard, the IBIS will be set to auto and will adapt to the focal length of your lens. But with a manual lens, the camera will or can't detect it. So you need to set the focal length manually, meaning you can't use the IBIS with a manual zoom lens or you need to adjust that setting each time you change your zoom value. By the way, you should increase the auto power off temperature in your camera to high. That way your camera won't shut off that easily when your body heats up during recording. Since I set that to high, none of my Sony cameras ever overheated again. Let's talk about the custom key settings. Now we will set our custom keys. This will be one of the most important settings you will use during your shootings. For your understanding, you have two custom key modes on your Sony camera. One is for the photo mode and one is for the video mode. And basically the video custom keys have a child function. So when you leave them on standard, um, all the buttons will have the same function as in the photo settings. There's only one setting that I change on the photo mode and that is the IAF. And I set it on the AF on button on the back of the camera. So I set the AF to continuous and I can just hold the button and spam the shutter button to take my portraits and the autofocus will always pinpoint on the eye of a person. Now let's jump into the video custom keys. The first button that we will set on the rear of the camera is the AEL button. And we will set it to AEL toggle, which means the outer exposure lock. So how I nail my exposure with my camera every time I shoot is that I shoot with a fixed aperture and shutter speed, but I shoot with auto ISO. So I frame my camera on the scenery, which I want to expose correctly. And then I press the AEL button to lock the exposure and the ISO will set automatically to a fixed value. And it won't change unless you turn off the camera or you reset the AEL button. The next one is the AF on button. And here I will set the AF MF selector toggle, which means pressing the button 
the camera will instantly switch between autofocus and manual focus. That way you can quickly set your focus on a fixed point without touching the camera or the focus wheel on your lens. I often use that when shooting on a gimbal if I keep the same distance to my person or subject that I want to film and I have objects pathing directly in front of the camera that I don't want to have in focus. Now I will set the APS-C or full frame switch on the bin or custom button 4. This only works on full frame Sony cameras because this way you can also use APS-C lenses on your full frame body. But I use it so I can crop the image by around 1.6 and I get more reach on my lenses. Of course this only works on the A7S III in full HD because it doesn't provide enough pixels in 4K to crop into the image, but we can use the zoom function on any Sony camera and that will also work in 4K on the A7S III, which gives you the possibility to turn any lens into a zoom lens, but you will compromise a bit of the image quality because it actually is a digital zoom. Another really good way of using your Sony Prime lens is when it has a dedicated custom button on it, you can use it to set your focus to focus hold. That way the camera will hold the focus as long as you press the button and uh, it can be a great feature when shooting handheld. And of course you should set your focus magnifier on any other custom button so you have the ability to zoom in while you're in manual focus and that way you can really pinpoint your focus on any object. Now let's talk about my functions menu and how I use the focus modes on my Sony cameras. When shooting on a gimbal I use the Sony AF field. It won't cover the whole screen area, but you can easily move it around from corner to corner to have the AF field wherever you need it. Together with the eye or face detection, I use that focus mode most of the time for my gimbal shots. Not only it will prevent the camera to suddenly focus on another object that is closer to the camera as the person you are filming, it will also help you to frame your subject better. For example, when you do a 360 shot with your gimbal around a person, it will help you to keep that person centered because you instinctively try to keep the person inside that frame. When I film close-ups, detailed or handheld, I will switch to the spot focus point and you can increase the size of it from small to large, but most of the time I use it on medium size. Then I just use the touch screen to use the tap to focus function. Of course, for that purpose, I reduce the AF transition speed to a minimum to make the focus pulls more cinematic. And for the other gimbal shots, I try to keep my AF tracking sensibility and transition speed to a maximum or at least at a very high value. One very important tip when you film a crowd is to turn off the face detection because it will just jump around searching for faces and you will end up focusing uh, people in the background that you don't want to have in focus. So for that scenario I will keep my zone or spot AF field to only keep the persons in focus that I actually want to film. And of course two advantages here on the Sony a7S III is that you finally have a good working touch to track function so the focus will stick on a person or object and will drag it all along the screen. And another one is that you can finally set a red color for your AF tracking fields. I wish for that function for so long on all my Sony cameras that I own. About my picture profiles I talked a lot in the last couple of my videos. I even did a full tutorial on my color grading process and how I use my LUTs to color grade my footage. I still use the HLG profile and I recently like to use the new uh, picture profile as Cinetone on the A7S III when I shoot something that I don't want to color grade or uh, when the footage should look good right out of the camera. But there is one setting that any Sony camera has and that is the Gamma Display Assist and you should use it. If you film in any lock or HLG format, it will work like an input LUT in your camera and display the image a lot more contrasty on your camera screen 
which also helps you a lot. Last but not least is how I set my white balance. And most of the time for outdoor shootings, I leave my white balance on 5,500 Kelvin. When shooting indoors, I use the auto custom white balance and set it on a point that is like in a mid gray or white area. You can also buy a cheap gray card online that will help you to nail your white balance every time when shooting. So that's it for this video. These tips will not work on any Sony camera. But for the newer full frame cameras like the A7C, A7III, R or S series and APS-C cameras like the A6400 or A6600, with this workflow on all my cameras I can quickly adapt to any situation which is a must for my run and gun style shooting. So I hope you learned something today and I will see you in my next video.